Hello, hello. Today I want to introduce and motivate the new project about software engineering for machine learning. And this is a, a joint ongoing research with uh, Alexander Stoyminov, who is a mathematician, and I'm a computer scientist. So let me show you the slides. A reliable artificial intelligence, software engineering for machine learning. That's what we want to investigate. And uh, to justify and uh, uh, give you some background, current temporary AI is highly unreliable. Let me give you some examples. So for example, uh, self-driving cars uh, try to read signs, road signs, but uh, there's often uh, make mistakes. So for example, uh, the left to stop signs which we recognize immediately are recognized by AI as a sign for speed limit 45, whereas the right sign is recognized as a stop sign, erroneously. Another example is the famous, or should I say infamous, chat GPT, which is a chatbot that uh, produces fairly impressive human uh, text uh, like human, but on closer inspection, it turns out that the content of the text is bullshit. And it's very hard to uh, sometimes to recognize that because it is uh, writes sentences so confidently, so confidently that, that this uh, issue has been picked up by the web page AI Snake Oil. Another example is Amazon. Amazon tried to use AI for rec recruitment purposes, for vetting the applications, but uh, they stopped doing that once they realized that it uh, is uh, their recruitment, AI recruitment is misogynistic. Another example is IBM's Watson AI having tried to be used for oncology, but it was canceled after spending, wasting $62 million because it made unsafe treatment recommendations, again, with full confidence, but bullshit. Here's an example of uh, picture recognition. The first picture is recognized as a panda with uh, acceptable confidence. The next picture is recognized as a nematode with very low confidence, which makes sense because it's simply just white noise, colored noise, but if we add 0.7% of that picture onto the panda, then suddenly AI recognizes this as a given with almost full confidence, which is an example of an error of unreliable AI. And finally, uh, there's even a book, online book about why most AI projects fail. So reliability is really an important, a pressing issue for AI. Now, um, AI uh, runs on computers, so why not ask a computer scientist my, like myself? Uh, because computer science arguably has achieved impressive uh, reliability in the classical realm. What do I mean with classical realm? I mean classical software engineering. Software engineering reliability builds on several core principles of computer science, such as, for example, rigorous problem specification or formal program or operation semantics, algorithm design and analysis, as opposed to coding, hacking, and final formal verification or some other form of software testing to ensure that the resulting program after implementation is really correct, is really reliable. And all of these principles rely highly built on mathematical logic actually so strongly yeah when i talk about semantics or specification in the language of first order logic or maybe monadic second order logic um, formal verification using proof assistance um, all this builds on logic so heavily that actually uh, these uh, famous authors like neil immerman or moshe vardy wrote this paper on the unusual effectiveness of logic in computer science. I would also like to mention that when it comes to numerics, then 
stability becomes uh, important. Um, it's like sensitivity or interval analysis, which is also known as reliable computing. That's uh, the principles of software engineering that assert reliability in classical computer science. In classical computer science, we thus have reliable software, which means for programming, which is only one of the two pole, polars, or antipodes of computing. The opposite end is hardware, something about soldering. Uh, here you see some hardware, and these uh, two antipodes are reflected by uh, commercial companies like Microsoft on the one side and Intel or IBM on the other side. And they're also reflected by departments in universities, such as, for example, uh, computer science department, as opposed to electrical engineering departments. So that in classical computing, we really have these two antipodes. And uh, reliability allows us to purchase uh, uh, products from these two antipodes and trust them. So for example, we can buy some software and trust that the software uh, will work correctly. Some apps from Microsoft App Store, for example. Or we buy hardware and we can trust that the hardware is going to work reliably. Um, so that's where reliability comes in and uh, is important in classical computing. But in machine learning, uh, between these antipodes, a new third um, uh, aspect that comes in with training. So uh, classically, we buy hardware, we buy software, or we program software, and then we're done. But in machine learning, we additionally have the training phase. Um, training uh, uh, model training, for example. And these are also reflected commercially with companies like Amazon, or Google. Um, now, how can we uh, <clears throat> even talk about reliability when we, uh, let's say, want to buy some trained model or some pre-trained model? Uh, because training is a never-ending process. So from a perspective from computer science, uh, this is only heuristics, not rigorous algorithms. So the question is really about uh, reliability. Uh, being able to buy trained model, pre-trained pre models uh, and to trust them. And that's not even well-defined as a, as a specification, right? Not to mention testing. So and this is uh, why uh, Alexander and I believe that uh, there's a need for a new type of software engineering specific for this third aspect um, of machine learning uh, beyond uh, software beyond hardware, the training. Uh, and to this end, we intend to apply and to generalize and to adapt all the principles that have been successful in asserting reliability in classical computing to the new realm of machine learning. That's uh, what I wanted to say. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out.